All right, so what I thought I would do is a video, just kind of an overview of paper one, um, since I may not be here and you may be thinking about it um, and kind of worrying about what paper one will be like. So if you are HL paper one, just a quick overview is 20% of your overall IB score. If you're SL, it is 30% of your overall score. When you come into the room, you'll be given two things. You'll be given a test booklet that looks like this, and you'll be given a source booklet that looks like this, that's a little thicker. When you get this, you'll be given five minutes reading time to begin with, in which you cannot write anything, but you should be looking over the source booklet and the test questions. For you guys, um, you're gonna go ahead on the test questions and not even worry about prescribed subjects one or two. Um, you're really gonna go straight to three, which is move to global war, and read over those questions. The fourth question on the test usually gives you a good idea of kind of what the gist is of all of the documents. And then you've also got rights and protest here, which if you are HL and you look at rights and protest and it's over civil rights in America, you could obviously answer that question. If it's over apartheid, you got no choice. You gotta go with move to global war then. Um, and I won't even worry about the one on the back because you haven't covered it at all. So you've got the test questions. During that five minutes, read over those. Go to your source booklet. Flip to the sources that pertain to that particular test. And they go again by, so you've got prescribed subject three. Move to global war here. Read over that. Um, go ahead during that five minutes reading time and look at the first question and start to formulate an answer in your head. When they say go, when the proctors say go, you then have 60 minutes to complete that exam. And there are four sources total in this booklet, and there are four questions you have to answer in that 60 minutes. Uh, with paper one, there's no general mark band. They're specific to the test. We don't even see them until after the test has been completed. There are 25 marks possible, and you can see the objectives there. So let's go through the questions. So the first question, and I put question nine here because that's the first question for move to global war. They order them all. So you see it starts with one, two, three, four, next section, five, six, seven, eight. You don't need to worry about any of those. Go straight to nine, 10, 11, 12, or if you're doing a question over civil rights, 13, 14, 15, and 16. But the first question for all of those sections is always gonna be the same type of question. It's always in two parts, A and B. It is always 9A, for instance, for move to global war on this exam, which is last year's exam. It is what, according to source K, were the factors contributing to tensions between Japan and the US. So it's a pretty obvious, just a straight up what question. One paragraph suffices. It's only worth three marks. Think about it during the reading portion. Try and have a few main points. Um, you know, don't copy word for word from the source, but stick pretty close to what it says. Try and have about three main points. So for that one, what according to source K were the factors contributing to tensions between Japan and the U.S.? I would just say the factors contributing to tensions between the J Japan and the U.S. according to source K are, and then give three things the source says. 9B then is always going to be some sort of visual question, usually a political cartoon. They like those a lot. And it'll be asking you to kind of uh, explain what the, the source says. So this one was, what does source L suggest about Japanese expansion? If you were to open the source booklet and go to source L, you have a political cartoon here and you need to look at it and kind of figure out what it suggests about Japanese expansion. This question is only worth two marks. So, you know, have a couple sentences just saying what uh, you kind of see in the picture what visuals you see, what the interpretation of those visuals might be. But I wouldn't spend a ton of time on this one either. Kind of get through those quickly. Um, but, you know, they're lower level thinking, so just try and state the obvious on those. Reuse the language of the question in your answer. It helps to kind of focus in on making sure you're answering the exact question. I would say Try and be done with question nine or the first question, depending on what section you're looking at, within five to seven minutes. It's only worth 20% of your score overall, so you want to get through that one quickly. The next question, <clears throat> which is question 10, if you're doing move to global war, just the second question in general, is always some sort of OPVL question. 
Um, so with this one, we've got, with reference to its origin, purpose, and content, analyze the value and limitations of source K for a historian studying the tensions between the U.S. and Japan. So what I would do in my answer is, first off, you know, use the language of the question, you know, with reference to origin, a value of the source for historians studying the tensions between Japan and the U.S. would be blank. You know, with reference to purpose, it is valuable, it is limiting. Um, you need to use those exact terms, origin, purpose, content, value, limitations. Make sure you pay attention to the topic. It's not just saying, hey, why is this source valuable in general? It is saying, why is this source valuable for a historian studying the tensions between Japan and the U.S.? They don't want you to just to say, it's a good source because this guy is a historian and thus could be trusted. They want to see, <clears throat> you know, this is a good source for studying this specific topic because it tells me X, Y, or Z. And that's derived from origin, purpose, or content. Don't treat excerpts as excerpts. Just treat it as it's the entire work. Don't say a limitation as I only see a little bit. You know, just they don't like that. Just try and pretend you have the whole source there in front of you. Um, also, please don't just say uh, it's valuable because it's primary or it's limited because it's secondary. You know, those... If you have nothing else, you know, and Mr. Slinger might have something different to say about this, but if you have something else, you could, if you don't have anything, you could use those. But they tend to look down on that unless you give a really good reason why you feel that way. Uh, for this one, one large paragraph, it's worth four marks. I would spend seven minutes or less on this question. And that's about it for the second question. So it's always OPVL, stick to the topic, make sure you've got two good, you know, it's four marks, so I would say two good values and two good limitations, and make sure those are related to origin, purpose, or content. Okay, the third question is always going to be a compare-contrast question, asking you to look at two documents and compare and contrast what the two sources reveal about something. So... In this one, it says, compare and contrast what sources I and J reveal about the increasing tensions between the U.S. and Japan. So what you should do then is basically take the two sources, break it down, one paragraph comparison, one paragraph contrast. Don't do a simplistic, you know, this source says this, this source says that. Focus on the topic. So in this case, it's asking you to compare what they reveal about increasing tensions between the U.S. and Japan. So you should say, they both say this about increasing tensions. They both don't say, you know, one says this about increasing tensions and the other doesn't. Uh, you don't need to use background knowledge, and that could go for any of these first three questions. You know, you need background knowledge as far as knowing kind of the context, but you don't need to bring it in. You could do the first three questions on any paper one without knowing anything. It's all about the skills, right, um, and how you can read documents. So just compare and contrast based on the topic. Don't compare and contrast, you know, the origins of the document or the purpose. They don't want you to say, well, this one's written by someone from America and this one's written by somebody from Britain. They want you to say they, the content is what's important. So I would have one comparison paragraph, one contrast paragraph, uh, it's worth six marks overall, so maybe three points comparison, three points contrast. And, you know, if you need to do a list of similarities and differences real quickly on scratch paper, that's fine. Just make sure you scratch it out if it's being turned in so the grader doesn't include that in their grading. Ten minutes would be good on this one. It's 24% of your overall score, so, you know, you don't want to go over 15 minutes at max um, since it's a quarter of the score, but if you get close to 15 minutes, on this one, that's that's fine. Okay, the last question then on paper one is always an essay question. It means it needs to have structure, have a thesis, all those things. This one is, mutual fear led to increasing tensions between the U.S. and Japan. Using the sources in your own knowledge, to what extent do you agree with this statement? So I would look at how much time you have left, try and get everything out that you know about. This is the one where you want to bring in your background knowledge. So you want to not only include what's in all the documents or as many as you can get in there, but also your own knowledge. You have to use both sources and your own knowledge. Doing one or the other means only half marks. 
There's some disagreement over whether you have to use all sources. I would say to be safe, go ahead and use all sources. Sometimes the political cartoon one is kind of hard to incorporate. You should try and use them, but, you know, it would rather, if you have more, you can say using your own knowledge, go for that too. Um, you can use them more than once. Don't just name check them. Actually use them as sources of information. Evaluate those sources, you know, um, just like you would do in a good paper two or three essay. Doesn't need to be as formal as paper two or three. Um, you know, do a quick introduction if you have to. Think This is basically a DBQ. Think of it like that. You might even start by bucketing, coming up with a thesis that answers the question. Um, sorry, it's windy in here. Um, and then, you know, kind of bucket thinking of what points you want to make and what sources support what points. Do as many paragraphs as you can. It's an essay. Um, it's worth nine marks overall. I would spend a good half of the time on this. Uh, it's almost half your score, so spending 30 minutes on it is probably a good idea. Um, so, yeah, that would be my advice there. This is the mark band for a paper one. Uh, fourth question, it does have a general mark band, so you can see it here, um, whereas the others don't really have a general mark band. So it's specific to each exam, but the, the mark band for question four is the same no matter the exam you are taking. Just a quick overview here so you can see that if you want to freeze this screen. So again, five minutes reading time. Read the last question. See what the overall topic is. Read the first question. Go read that source. Start formulating an answer. Spend five minutes on 1A, three minutes on 1B if you have to. Uh, two to three sentences, direct answer to the question. Question two, one large paragraph, OPVL it. Question three, two paragraphs, compare and contrast. And then the fourth one is an essay. Um, before I go here, let me show you. Now we're going to look at my computer for just a second. Um, what the mark scheme kind of looks like for the other ones. And again, it's specific to each exam, but I do, I can kind of show you what a general one looks like. One I've created. So this is what a grader would get. They would get something like this. So you can see it says 9A, you got the question, and then it has some points that could be made. 9B, same thing. 10, they've got it broken down in values and limitations. So, you know, you should have two good values, two good limitations here and they really are going to be looking at origin. What's the value of the, the origin? What's the value of the purpose? What's the value of the content? Limitation of the origin, or limitation of the content, etc. Then there is kind of a general mark band for the compare contrast question, but there's also indicative content. You've got like kind of what the main points would be here. And then lastly, general mark band along with what each source kind of says in relation to that question and they also get a thing saying what own knowledge is um, available out there okay so that's it um, good luck on the exams you know uh, I think you guys will do good just uh, do the best you can um, and uh, Slingerland and I will be proud of you either way <laughs>